I used to be an incredible grandparent. I know because that's what everyone told me. Kathy and I have five grandkids from age seven through age 13, and we are so blessed that they all live nearby. We get to see them frequently. So we babysat, gave them snacks, videoed them as they splashed in the baby pool and clipped diaper coupons in the Sunday paper. We went to all of their dance recitals and competitions, t-ball games, preschool graduations, VBS programs. I took grandkids out for one-on-one -on -one dates, taught a couple of them to swim. We took them to Dollywood dozens of times, had picnics in the Smoky Mountains. We took them on overnight trips, had sleepovers with all five of them at our home. But a big change happened in 2018. Oh, we still do all that stuff I just mentioned. As far as the culture is concerned, we're still incredible grandparents. But something significant was missing and we weren't even aware of it. You see, even non-Christian grandparents are doing most of the stuff that I just listed. But we discovered in 2018 that it's not enough to settle for being an incredible cultural grandparent. You know, playmates, babysitters, snack dispensers. It's not even enough to be Christian grandparents. We are commanded by Scripture to be intentional Christian grandparents. Oh, sure, we had always prayed for our grandkids. And when they were here, we prayed with them at mealtimes. I would read Bible stories to them. They would occasionally watch a VeggieTales video. And that was about it. Pretty casual, still pretty impressed with ourselves. But then Kathy and I attended the Grandparenting Matters Seminar sponsored by the Legacy Coalition. And it completely rocked our grandparenting world. One little word initiated that spiritual earthquake. The three-letter word, and... You see, in Deuteronomy 4, Moses is telling the people of Israel how blessed they are. They've seen God's mighty deeds. They have received God's wonderful commands, His, His instruction manual for life. They have enjoyed God's presence in their midst. And then Moses says, so be careful. Watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live and then teach them to your children, here it comes, and to your children's children. Yikes! This isn't a, a one and done thing. We don't send our kids off to college or marriage and then dust off our hands and go spend their inheritance. No. Now our responsibilities shift to becoming ambassadors for Christ in the lives of our grandchildren. We're missionaries to a really cute mission field, focusing on passing along a legacy of faith to following generations. Well, it was a challenging wake-up call for Kathy and me because we are deeply concerned about the compromising and sinful culture in which our grandkids are living. We're very upset about the upheavals that many families are experiencing due to divorce, drug and alcohol addiction, workaholism, the explosion of pornography and gender confusion. We're very alarmed about the amount of screen time our grandkids are amassing, the hate that is spewed so loudly on social media, the misinformation, the bullying, the shallow, disconnected relationships, and the dangerous predators stalking children. We are so saddened by the lack of Bible knowledge and the shrinking involvement in a local church that many of our grandkids are facing. Somebody needs to do something! And it seems that God is raising up this generation of baby boomer and Gen X grandparents to step into that dangerous gap. Proverbs 13.22 tells us that a good person leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Now, friends, that verse is talking about much more than leaving some money in our will for our grandkids' college expenses. So many Christian grandparents are missing important opportunities to pass on their faith to their grandkids and great-grandkids. Five years ago, God prompted Larry and Diane Fowler to launch the Legacy Coalition to help grandparents grow in their biblical roles 
through a wide variety of events and resources so they, they can have a greater spiritual impact on their families. And the blessings of God have been abundant over those five years. A world-class team of seasoned Christian leaders from across the nation has come together. Many of them retired after four or five decades of faithful service to God's kingdom in, in some very significant capacities. The Grand Parenting Matters Seminar has been presented from coast to coast. The first ever national conference on grandparenting, the Grand Parenting Summit, attracts thousands of motivated grandparents annually to hear speakers like David Jeremiah, Chuck Swindoll, John Stone Street of the Colson Center, Tim and Darcy Kimmel, Ken Davis, Scott Wesley Brown, and so many others. A free weekly webinar called Grand Monday Nights has featured many of those folks I just mentioned, helping us understand our grandkids' world and giving us amazingly practical guidance in how we can respond to the challenges of a decaying culture, geographical distance, technological seductions, relational tensions, spiritual disconnections. A speaker's bureau of pastors slash grandfathers continues to be recruited and trained to bring the vision of intentional Christian grandparenting to pulpits across the land. Resources are being developed at an amazing pace. Books like uh, Long Distance Grandparenting, Grandparenting with Grace, Biblical Grandparenting, Overcoming Grandparenting Barriers, and so many others are being released regularly. Tools like the uh, Prayer Placemat. We love this tool. It sits on our dining room table. It gives you a suggestion every day of the month of something for which we should be praying for our grandkids, that they will learn to control their anger, anxiety. There's a scripture connected with each one of these. They'll find peace that they'll give their lives to Christ. They'll learn to obey their parents. That's a wonderful tool. The grandkids see us sitting on our dining room table every time they come over, and they know that we're praying all of this over them every month. We love our placemat. There's uh, tools like the Let's Talk cards. We pull these out when the grandkids are over. Questions, creative conversation starters to talk with your kids about on levels preschool, elementary, adolescent levels and then after you've asked them those questions then they turn it over and on the yellow side are some questions for them to ask you as the grandparents little scripture prayer cards every month each one of my grandkids gets one of these a little space to write in their name some discussion comments on a little scripture passage on the back every month i write the david wheeler unauthorized translation of that verse so many resources being developed. And uh, by the way, you can find information about all of this at LegacyCoalition.com. But a core result that we want to see take place is local churches quickly launching grandparenting ministries to motivate, encourage, and resource the Christian grandparents in their region. As church leaders, you may be noticing that traditional senior saints ministries are declining rapidly. Now, there are a lot of reasons for that. We don't have time to talk about that here. But one big reason is that most baby boomers are simply not interested. But they are interested in their grandkids. May I suggest that for this generation, the new seniors ministry just may be a grandparenting ministry? Passionate grandparents meeting monthly to watch a challenging teaching from the Grand Monday Nights Archive sharing new ideas and resources they've discovered, praying for each other and for grandkids who are experiencing painful situations or drifting from the faith, studying one of the many wonderful books that are available on a wide variety of grandparenting issues, planning gift showers for first-time grandparents, presenting events that grandkids and grandparents can experience together. Now, on the Legacy Coalition website, there are free resources that will guide you through the process of starting a grandparenting ministry. And once again, that's at LegacyCoalition.com. Well, numerous studies are being released that affirm the amazing influence grandparents can have. We are able to very effectively offer grace and wisdom, love, guidance, understanding, 
things that are largely absent in the worlds our grandkids inhabit. Please, Christian leaders, don't let the grandparents in your congregations settle for being lovable but spiritually uninvolved mammals and papals. Challenge them to the high and holy calling of intentional Christian grandparenting.